Good morning, dear students. This is session two of object-oriented program. In today's class, we'll see what is procedural oriented programming and what is object oriented program. Along with that, we'll go through principles or basic concepts of OOP. First, let's go through POP and OOP. Let's discuss the difference between POP and OOP. POP is procedural oriented programming and OOP is object oriented programming. Okay. In POP, program is divided into functions. That is POP. And in OOP, it is divided into objects. That is for POP, it is functions and for OOP, it is object. For POP, importance is not given to data but to functions. The same thing discussed over here is pointed here. Here, for OOP, importance is given to data. POP follows top-down approach, whereas OOP follows bottom-up approach. That is from the top, it is coming down. So that is top down and bottom up means from the bottom it is going up like this. Okay. And POP does not have access specifiers whereas OOP has private, public and protected access specifiers. So these all we'll see in this detail in basic concepts. In POP, data can move freely from function to function. In OOP, it is with the help of member functions. Adding new data is not easy. Here it is easy and does not have any proper way for hiding data. In POP, data hiding is not possible, whereas in OOP, it is possible. Overloading is not possible in POP. It is possible in OOP. Okay. So examples of POP are C, VB, Fortran, Pascal, etc. And for OOP it is C++, Java, VB.net. Okay. So these are the main difference between POP and OOP. C++ is OOP and that, that is what we are studying in detail We know OOP is object oriented programming. That is C. That is an important object oriented programming. It is a programming language that uses classes and objects to create models based on real world environment. That is, classes are used and objects are being used. One reason to use object oriented program is because it makes it easy to maintain and modify existing code. It is quite easy to handle. Another reason is ease of development is easy to develop the last reason to use object oriented programming is that efficiency of the language next is procedural oriented programming which at times have been referred to as inline programming takes a more top down approach object oriented programming is bottom up approach next we are going to see is principles or basic concepts of OOP. Basic concepts are classes, objects, data abstraction and encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, dynamic binding and message passing. Let's see one by one in detail. First we are going to learn what is a class. A class is a collection of objects of similar type. Just imagine a class. That is, uh, suppose you are studying in 
standard one okay you are studying in standard one so what is uh, that is the members of that particular standard are the students who are studying in that class right suppose you are studying in some other higher class suppose you are studying in engineering so in that particular class in that particular section or class the contents or the data are the objects students who all in that particular class no other class student will come and sit in that particular class right so that is what a class is a collection of objects of similar type a class in c++ is a user defined data type or data structure declared by the keyword class that has data and functions as its members whose access is governed by three access specifiers private protected and public that is a class is a user defined data type that is my class is being built or being prepared for based on the user's interest so that is why user defined data type and the keyword used is class and within that class data can be there and functions can be there they are the members of that particular class and the access that is how the data and the functions written with the within the class are to be accessed is governed by three access specifiers private protected or public that is what that is access how that particular data and functions can be accessed to the public they can be uh, we all all of us are using facebook right so when you are putting a photo or you, when you are uploading a photo they you can make it as private you can make it as public you can make it as logged etc the same way the data and functions within the members that are the members right so that data and functions can be accessed based on three access specifiers if you are making it as private some categories are there if it is protected some other if it is public some other that will study in detail in the next class okay so by default access to members of a c++ class is private if you are not giving any access specification it becomes private okay that is it is a class is a collection of objects of similar type and is a user defined data type used by the denoted by the keyword class and the members are data functions data and functions that is data members and member functions and access can be private protected or public normally by default the access is private next is objects in the last slide we have seen class includes objects right so objects are the students in the particular class okay so that is what are basic run time entities in a object oriented system run time entities that is when the program is being executed at that time objects are needed objects are instances of class which holds the data variables declared in class and the member functions work on these class objects always the member functions or the data members worked on the classes uh, class objects each objects have different data variables objects have different data variables an object is an element of a class that is class includes objects so objects have the behaviors of their class so when a particular student in is in uh, first year engineering class means or first or some particular class means that whatever the features are there for that particular class the same features are there for that students okay so that is objects so here is an example of class and object mango is there apple banana we know that all of them are fruits so you can write class is fruit okay and mango is a data that is mango is 
a fruit and it belongs to the group fruit okay so this will create an object mango mango is object and class is fruit hope that class and object is clear for you now that is uh, this is the standard name fruit here you can write this class name and here you can write the object within that so within this object only the class will be executed next is data abstraction and encapsulation what is abstraction hiding unwanted information that is abstraction Un that is the main uh, characteristics or concept of op is data hiding technique so that hiding can is that particular method is known as abstraction is a method of hiding the unwanted information that is uh, that that should, that need not made to be public so it is kept as hidden that is what abstraction hiding internal details and showing functionality only suppose uh, just consider a television so what is there you just see the screen right you you are just that the screen is only open to us we don't know what is the internal circuit what are the transistors or what are the capacitors what are the internal circuits we don't bother about that we just see the screen so the internal details have been hidden and we are just seeing the functionality that is hiding internal details and showing functionality only next is focuses on what the object does instead of how it does focuses on what the object does that is we just want to see whether it is uh, whether the television uh, displays the picture in a right manner or not we don't want to know what is happening inside that is data abstraction again it is being explained wrapping code and data together into a single unit class is an example of encapsulation the next one is encapsulation data abstraction and encapsulation okay so what is uh, just remember a medi medical medicinal capsule so you know that within that capsule many granules will be there we don't know what are the granules and we don't open it and see what is inside right so that hidden portions are being wrapped in one cover and that becomes a capsule same way class is an example of encapsulation because it wraps the method and property within that class methods and properties will be there encapsulation is a process of combining data members and functions in a single unit called class this is to prevent the access to the data directly the access to them is provided through the functions of the class that is through the functions of the class that data is are being accessed it is one of the popular feature of op that helps in data hiding that is what data hiding that is a one of the important feature of oop and that is what data abstraction and encapsulation says next is inheritance inheritance is an important concept of object oriented program inheritance allows us to define a class in terms of another class which makes it easier to create and maintain an application this allow also provides an opportunity to reuse the code functionality and fast implementation time here the feature is reusing feature okay just consider we are having the features of our parents our grandparents and so on when someone calls takes the features of us naturally the features of our parents or grandparents can also be accessed that is in us within the features of within our features our parents or our family features will also be enclosed that is what inheritance that is when we call a particular child feature naturally or automatically as hidden his parents feature also will that is what inheritance that is what here it is written inheritance allows us to define a class in terms of another class that is a parent can be called 
or feature of the parent can be called with the help of feature of the child. That is what inheritance allows us to define a class in terms of another class. With the help of a class, you can call another class also. And that is reusing capacity. And that is another important concept of OOP. Again, it is written. When creating a class, instead of writing completely new data members and member functions, the programmer can designate that a new class should inherit the members of an existing class. That is inherit, includes. This existing class is called as a base class and the new class is known as the derived class. That is a parent class is known as a base class and the child class is known as the derived class. Idea of inheritance implements that is a relationship. This mammal is a animal. Animal is the parent class and mammal is the child class. So you can say mammal is a animal, is a relationship. Dog is a mammal. Again come see. Dog is again the child and mammal is the parent. So mammal is a child of animal. Right. Mammal is an animal. So you can say what are the features of that animal? It comes in mammal. And here dog is a mammal. So feature of mammal will come in, come as a feature of dog. That is a chain. And that is reusing. So here is an example of inheritance. That is vehicle is the base class. Two classes have been derived from vehicle. They are the motor vehicles and pulled vehicles. These vehicles are divided into two. Motor vehicles are there, pulled vehicles are there. Again, for motor vehicles, car is there, bus is there. Here, carts are there and rickshaw is there. So, we know that vehicles will be having its own attributes, it, its own features. When it is divided into motor vehicles and pulled vehicles, motor vehicles are having its own feature along with the features of the vehicle. Same for pulled vehicle, they are having its own feature that is pulled by something and it is having the features of vehicles also. Same, car is there, bus is there. Both are we know both are motor vehicles. That is both of them are having the features of motor vehicle and it's, they are having their own features. Okay, this is inheritance. Here the parent class or this is the base class and these are the derived classes. When you come to this vehicle is the base class and these following are the derived classes. So when you come to car class, when you come to the derived class, automatically the base class are also being used. This is inheritance. Next is polymorphism. What is morphism? Changing the shape. Polymorphism, changing the shape into many. That is polymorphism. That is what many forms. When you are taking plus, this is a sign what you are normally doing for addition. Same can be used for when it is being used with Plus, plus. See, the concept have been changed. It is auto increment. And when it is uh, used in a particular word, that is, my is there, and then plus, self is there. That is, my plus self. What will be the answer? The answer will be myself. Right? Here, Plus is acting as concatenation. See the difference? This plus is having different uses now. So that is what polymorphism means many forms and it occurs when we have many classes that are related to each other by inheritance. C++ polymorphism means that a call to a member function will cause a different function to be executed 
depending on the type of object that invokes the function. Based on the type of the object, the functionality keeps on changing. That is polymorphism. Consider the operation of addition. For two numbers, the operation will get generated sum. If the two operands are strings, then the operation produces a third string by concatenation. Same plus addition. Okay, so same addition is having different features. When it is used for sum, it will add. And when it is used with strings, it will go for concatenation. That is polymorphism. The process of making an operator to show different behavior in different instances is known as operator overloading. And another one is function overloading. When the operator is keeping on changing the features, that is operator overloading. And when the function is keeping on changing the feature, that is function overloading. Here, function overloading example is given over here. Shape, draw. This is a function. Draw is a function. You can draw triangle. You can draw circle. You can draw a square. Okay. So the same draw function. Just change the attributes, values. You can draw the circle. You can draw a triangle or you can draw a square. This is function over loading. Next is dynamic binding or late binding. Binding, what is binding? That is including or adding. Binding refers to the linking of a procedure call to the code to be executed in response to the call. That is linking of a procedure call to the code to be executed in response to the call. That is based on the call, based on any particular call, the code and the procedure are being connected or being binded. That is mixing, adding, that is binding. Dynamic binding means that the code associated with a given procedure call is not known until the time of the call at run time. That is at the run time only. Run time is the last time, last case. That is execution time. During that time only, the code associated with a given procedure call is known. Other than, other than that, it is not known. That is dynamic binding or late binding. Late, that is uh, at the end only we are going for execution. That is late. And at that time only it is binding. The code and the procedure are being mixed up. That is the code and procedure call are linked only at run time. This sentence is explained more clearly with this. The code and the procedure call are linked or connected or added only at the run time. Run time is a late time. Okay, think like that. So that is why it is known as late binding. It's message passing. Whenever do we do anything, message is being passed between them. That is, objects communicate with each other by passing messages. Message passing specifies the name of the object, function, and information to be sent. These messages are passed between object, function. Right. So that is message passing. So contents will be from where to where and what is to be passed. That is message passing. A question can be asked. What are the four basic principles of object oriented programming? The basic principles of object oriented programming. So you can write, there are four major principles that make a language object-oriented. These are encapsulation, data abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. So these, this is what we have to write for this. These are also called as four pillars of object-oriented programming. Last class, we have seen 
the basic concepts of OOP, right? So there we have detailedly studied. I have explained in detail what is encapsulation, what is data abstraction, what is polymorphism, and what is inheritance. Encapsulation and data abstraction. And there are number of other hiding are no polymorphism on but they come pala shape pala reusability uh, inheritance reusability are no polymorphism on but they come number in or a like on the very jolly will jay picking the so other polymorphism inheritance still on a polymorphism are in the number of partner so it rain carrying lana number four basic principles of object oriented program so op at a encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. So, this is the basic four principles. We will learn the same thing we have to repeat over here. Okay, you have to write what is encapsulation, what is abstraction, what is polymorphism and what is inheritance. So, these are the important, these are the four basic principles of object-oriented programming. This is the main difference. We POP and POP. So, that's the difference. Okay.